Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are celebrating 25 years beginning now, even though I don't have the new logo uh, under Tom. Uh, we are working on the new logo. It'll be up at Baltimore Positive. Uh, some things are getting to the finish line on this 25th anniversary. One thing we certainly have, scratch-offs in the Maryland Lottery. Uh, you're still going to get 0-0-1. Tom Pierce okay. uh, sitting a, a lingering longer, thinking that there might be like a Philly cheesesteak uh, in the back here at Costas. We're going to be over at Drug City. Uh, on Friday, uh, if you're hearing this uh, next week, uh, August 3rd, 1998, today we went into business. I've been sharing lots of old school social media stuff and fun stuff. And, you know, you order a bowl of Maryland crab soup, and it's almost like being in Japan where you, you, you swipe your credit card and the machine just spits it out mm -hmm. uh, because there's like a level of efficiency here. I don't even know where it came from. Like, my wife just brought me a, a bowl of Maryland crab soup. Uh, it is the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. It's also presented by our friends at Window Nation. In conjunction with Raskin Global, Leonard is uh, sorry he couldn't be here today. Uh, he's going to join me next week and already did 25 years. We had Kenny Albert on. I've got all these copies of Purple Rain and Free the Birds stuff and Get Nasty stuff. Tom Pierce is here, and he walked in and he, he gave up a beautiful day on the golf course at Classic Five to be here today. And he started, like, bending my ear about the Eagles and the <laughs> Phillies and all of this stuff. And, and sort of, like, you had this air that I wouldn't know anything about being a Philadelphia sports fan. And let me just say this. Uh, I saw Rocky in 77, 78, 79, Rocky two then. And the 1980 Phillies did what the 79 Orioles couldn't do. And they had the Philly Fanatic, and they played on – pretty green grass and the only time you saw them was when Mel Allen said how about that so I, I I didn't know Philadelphia was even close till I got a Rand McNally map and figured you could get there in a couple of hours um, and the first time I went to Philadelphia was in 1981 with my paternal father Nestor who was Venezuelan and an Aparicio and had baseball connections and the next thing I know we're at the stadium Hilton and he's getting me. He knew Manny Trio. Oh, okay. Who's Venezuelan? He also knew Bo, Bo Diaz, mm -hmm. who was Venezuelan. So I have all these autographs on Stadium Hilton letterhead from Dick Ruthven, Gary Maddox, Gary Matthews, who I got to know his son, which is a great guy, Sarge, Bob Boone. Uh, just down the line, man. I mean, I'm old school, right? So, and I fell in love with that Bubble P and the Fanatic. And I came back to Baltimore, and my whole life I've been Memorial Stadium. And it was boring. Eddie Murray was boring to me, and Cal Ripken. And I mean, I was 13, 14. I was feeling rambunctious, feeling so National League at that time. The American League was so the junior circuit. And I collected a lot of baseball cards. I was a big Mike Schmidt fan. I had Mike Schmidt stuff everywhere. I, I went to, to the vet on Richie Ashburn Day okay. in 1981, and I had a Daddy-O Richie Ashburn. I still have it to this day with a bubble P white. It's probably worth 100 bucks on the Internet. So that's how Philly I am. Then I fell in love with the Spectrum and going up there to events, games, wrestling matches, uh, concerts. My God, Getty Lee, all that stuff. And, um, and I love hockey, so hating the Flyers was an awesome thing to be a part of. Prop, Kerr, Hextall, hated them all. And then we lost the Colts. Right. And I didn't have football. I, I was a Houston Oilers fan, big time. Big, you know, honestly, in my, when Bob Nuskart gets here, I'm going to wear my Dan Pastorini jersey <laughs> that I happen to have. So I... I was an Oiler fan in the mid-'80s. We lost the football team. The Oilers were the last team to play the Colts Memorial Stadium, Earl Campbell. And uh, in 1986, my friend Russ Letra said to me, look, man, we've had two years without football. This is killing me. And Russ is from Dundalk. Russ is like, I'm going to get season tickets up in Philadelphia. Do you want to go to a couple games? And I said, I'll go to any of the games that don't conflict with the Oilers. And mm -hmm. the Oilers were really good. Warren Moon Oilers. So they played Monday night a lot. So I went to five Eagles games a year during all the Randall Cunningham, Rich Cotite right. era, Gang Green. I mean, I was in the upper deck. To, so, like, I probably went to 40 Eagles games during that era. Preseason games I went. I, like, all of that. So, like I, like, I can't wait to hear your Philadelphia stories. 
So what do you want to hear about? The, well, first thing's the pretzels, they, right? Oh, the pretzels. We started on the pretzels, and you're like, they used to sell them out of the, out of the, the grocery cart. Yeah. And I used to eat them, and every memory I have in the 1980s of every game, I got named Nasty Nestor because I lost the bet that had to do with Eddie Murray hitting home runs off of Todd Froworth mm-hmm. at the vet right. as a Dodger because I went up there. And every one of those games ended with me parking my car, including the World Series Game 5 with my dad, and Buying pretzels for a buck or two, two for three dollars, whatever it was, funny accents like Howard Eskin. And that pretzel would be glued to the top of the roof of my mouth from the minute you went over to Poop Bridge where they were burning the stuff, past the airport, yep. past Blue Ball Avenue, into Claymont, Delaware, if you didn't stop and get a cheesesteak at the Claymont, around the bend where the water and the train tracks are. You then you the Delaware Memorial Bridge, and you get to Elkton. And it's uh, still be in your teeth. teeth. God, I love those Those pretzels. I'm gonna eat eat some soup. You tell some stories. All right. Well, it's something. They don't have this in Philly. Maryland crab soup. They don't have. Well, the positive for the Orioles. Crab uh, fries. Yeah. Ridiculous. That uh, I was at uh, the Storm Davis game. Sad when we lost uh, to the Orioles in '83. Um, That was the Benny Ayala game. Yep. That was a Palmer started that game. But I got to say, your stories of the vet. That was my 15th birthday. That was probably that's probably the worst stadium ever built. It was a dump when they built it. It was the uh, worst place to see many games. I remember the preseason game. It was when, bad for everything. When when um when they were playing the Ravens and they canceled the preseason game because the turf was so bad before they opened the link. I had a bus <laughs> trip up there with 150 people, and I'm I had a watch party at a Rundle Mills Mall at uh what was it? It was a Duclaw mm-hmm. Brewery. And I'm in the brewery, and Steve Hennessy got all of our listeners at a freaking preseason game in August. And Billick and Goose, Goose came out and did the show with me at the barn. And he said, I'm walking around out there. We're going to get killed, man, you know? Oh, it was a, it Were was you at that dump. game? No, I didn't go to that game. Nobody but went was, to that yeah, game except but, my bus trip. Right. But, I mean, that stadium was a dump. When they you built probably the Rundle Mills Mall me that night, right? No, uh, no. But I helped. I was part of the. I used to work for the mills. I opened around the mills as that a marketing person. That was the hard knocks year. So that was yes. August of 01. One. Yeah, August okay. of 01. But uh, other things about. I mean, when you think of the Philadelphia sports, all the years I've been in Baltimore since '90. Baltimore and Philadelphia sports are very similar. Everybody the fans says are that. similar. Uh, I've gone to enough. My uh, family that uh, through my wife's side of the family, I have season tickets to the Ravens. I'm actually going to the preseason game against the. Do you Eagles. root for the Ravens or you, yes. you hate them? No, I like them. I mean, it's, like as a Ravens fan, we hated the team with the R with the burgundy and gold. Oh, we yes, that's, I mean, hated it forever. And then they and got the team so with the bad. big D on it, or the big star. We hate yeah, them too. And they got so bad, you feel sorry. I mean, they're like a poverty nation. No, you know, not it's, at all. It's, it's 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 almost like Haiti. Would you, know would, I mean? you, would you feel, feel that way against them, the Steelers? You know? Would you th- would ever think that way against the Steelers? Well, I mean, I got a soft spot for the Steelers because they credentialed me last year in the Ravens. Oh, no, well, so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I have a personal thing, but um, I, I I went up to Mike Tomlin in Dallas, two thousand whatever year they were in the Super Bowl against the Packers. Mm-hmm. And I knew Mike pretty well then. I know him obviously better. It's been almost 15 years that's that uh, happened, right? Still hadn't had a losing season. So you give respect to their family, to the Steelers. But he's up on the podium doing the morning press conference with, uh, I guess it was McCarthy then or no? Yeah. It was McCarthy. It yeah, wasn't McCarthy. Yeah. It was McCarthy. It wasn't Holmgren. So there had been an ice storm in Dallas on that Friday morning. It was three inches of ice. Nobody could get to the press right. conference. So there's about 15, 20 people in here right now. Costas, they just opened. We're doing the show. And it was about this many reporters that were there because you couldn't get to it. My hotel was attached to oh. the press conference. And it was 7 o'clock on Friday morning. And there's nobody there. And I've attended these things before. But I attended it to see Mike do his thing. I haven't known him a little bit. And he saw me because there was nobody to see. It was 15 people. He winked at me. I asked a question or something because there's nobody there to ask questions. 20 minutes later, they shake hands. They do the picture. Mm-hmm. It's all on Ripper NFL Drake. Network, right? I mean, they had NFL Network then. It was 2011, I guess, was that year? 9, 10, 11? Yeah, it was around that. Whatever that year was, it was in Dallas. And I went up to him. I'm like, hey, coach. I shook his hand. I'm like, good luck. He's like, you don't mean that. You don't mean that. You don't mean that. Right. And I'm like, Nah, I don't, I don't mean that. No, I don't not mean, at all. I don't mean never, that at all. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm relentless in right. my, you know. But, I mean, I, you respect them. You oh, know? exactly. Well, yeah, if but, they But, I won. mean, what, you, you moved here when? What year In 1990. But what so, was, we didn't have a team. So, you've been off the boat with seeing us go through all the pain to get a team. Correct. 
Well, I mean, you're almost a Baltimorean, man. No, that's why, like, well, the beauty I have in, in Philadelphia, our sports are all in the different conferences of the, other, of the Baltimore sports. So the, the Orioles are my AFC. Uh, and my you can watch a the Flyers like, suck and not have to worry about right, us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then we have, I mean, I'm, the Wizards I don't count as Baltimore. I mean, they're still Washington, so I don't count that. I just think of the Ravens and the Orioles. And being in different conferences, it's great. The only time we'd meet is in the championship game. Right. I mean, when I think of Baltimore versus Philadelphia ever, there's the World Series. Mm-hmm. Like, ever, other than getting the Flyers instead of the Clippers. Right. I mean, Philadelphia and St. Louis got that round of expansion. Um, I mean, Bullet Sixers even, like, you know, Dr. J was a different thing than Wes Unsell. Right. Like, when I think about even my childhood loving the Wizards and the Capitals. The Capitals, Flyers, um, there was there been some wars for sure. You know, back yeah. in the 80s, I was at all those games, you know. I was there the night that Lindros got blown up against the Devils in Game 7. Oh, okay, well, Scott I mean, Stevens. Dude, dude, I, I, I was there when Scott Stevens blew, was blowing people up with a gas. Yeah, <laughs> um, you're covering that with Brian Murray. So, I mean, I've been at this a long time, with, but, but Philadelphia sports – I mean, I was at all the World Series games with Schilling. I mean, Schilling married my best friend growing up. Oh. I mean, Kurt Schilling's wife was, was the person I hooked journalism class in first, uh, first period to go to Burger King and get a croissant on, <laughs> on Merritt Boulevard back in 1985. Sorry. And that's why I got a D in journalism. True story. I got a D in journalism, Miss Douglas. I still give her a hard time when I see her. But um, Philadelphia, for me, as, as a Baltimorean, I love the Phillies. Hated the Flyers. Love Dr. J. I mean, mm-hmm. like, Classic. Dr. J was my guy. I always loved Barkley because he was cool to me. And then, then later in life, I, 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 I went out one night with Charles Barkley in Vegas, and he's a great guy. So I like, always liked the Sixers because mm-hmm. I always liked Dr. J. Yeah. I liked Dr. J more than I liked Larry Bird or Magic. Or I, Dr. J was my guy in basketball. Um, I like George uh, Gervin, too, but when I'm thinking about that, but I didn't have this hatred of the Eagles. Matter of fact, I hated the Redskins. The Giants were like parcels and they were mm-hmm. New York, and why would you like the Giants? The Cowboys, my God, I hated the Cowboys. Right? Oh. Everybody hated the Cowboys. So, like, getting those season tickets in the 80s, I mean, it was, it was an easy fit. Now, I never owned an Eagles anything. I was never really an Eagles fan. I went there and sat. I was an Oilers fan, right? I mean, this was my thing, right? So I sat there, not neutral. It was fun when he, E-A-G-L-E-A. And, the, the, you know, the guy that would come every week and sat next to us, my seats were in section 721, row one. All my tickets have the same. I have all the ticket stubs. And so it was corner of the end zone, and you'll love this. Russ says to me, Hey, Ness, we're going to get tickets to see the Eagles at the Vet in 1986. This is right around the time they booed Santa Claus, mm-hmm. the snowballs. They closed the, I was there the day they closed the upstairs urinals, and the guys were just peeing in the alcoves during an Arizona Cardinals game. Oh, I can it was that. 20 degrees Christmas week. You know, 18,000 people at the Vet. They stunk. But so all these years, Cotite era. <laughs> <laughs> that was who? Eskin, Bad time. Oh, you know, all of that. There, there was just something about, like, I never hated those teams, like are growing up hating the teams in the way that there's this rivalry with Pittsburgh or even Washington. Um, I don't know. I, I never felt that way. Well, so, I think it's also being in a different And I like Rocky, you yeah. know what I mean? So there was a you know, a little bit of that. Well, one thing I know, when I moved down here, I mean, the, or, the uh, Colts were gone for, what, seven years by then, and just how much the Redskins then were pushed on the Baltimore market and forced on it. And I had friends grow up. What people I met here? You're no, like a Baltimore, man. Well, exactly. Well, it's you know Baltimore likes in football like defense. Philadelphia's the I, same thing. As I pull the crab from the crab soup, it costs us out of my teeth. I mean, we have the same philosophies of how we like our teams. We love the guys that try hard. They might not be the all stars, the best, but the ones that we all have deep in our hearts. Who's the your guys, favorite? Give me some of your favorite Philadelphia athletes that aren't Bobby Jones. Okay, fair I enough. love Bobby Jones because he played defense. That was your guy. All right. Oh, I loved him because uh, Dr. J would score. Yeah, Tony had cheeks. I like Maury's cheeks because he was quiet. Mo. But, man, he could go on in basketball. Hockey, I like Tommy Gorrance. Okay. Wow, okay. Going that way. And, I mean, that See, kind saw, of style. I saw you more as a Shell Samuelson guy. No, no. Well, yeah. I like the Rat Patrol also. Kenny Linsman, Paul Holmgren, and Prop. They call that the Rat Patrol line. Okay. Because you had the different angles and uh, – uh, different, you had three different skill sets together, which I thought was great. Um, and in football, you know, you go through and you, the team was so bad when I was growing up in the 70s, they were never on TV. 
I actually right, saw like more the, Miami. The, the I saw more era. You're talking, yeah, about. because they wouldn't show them on TV. Like now, you're going to see this out. If they didn't sell out, they weren't on TV. When I grew up in the early '70s, who they, was the quarterback before Jaworski? Oh my God! I um, mean, I don't even know. I don't remember his name either because they were so bad. But we would see on TV more Miami Dolphins games. Did Bob Avellini spend five minutes there or something like that? Barely. Yeah, maybe. Barely. Yeah, I mean that sounds I mean, right. I mean, if you watch the movie. Um, with uh, Mark Wahlberg, I mean that's where that's I just don't even remember that guy's name because they were so bad they weren't it was even like on the Tony Danza movie where you know the trash man correct kicking the field goals exactly well I you know I I can profess like play that I would hate the Eagles I'll tell you something about the Eagles I went to all those games all those years and then they moved into the new stadium and um I, I don't think I went up there for any like an Eagles somebody else game. But I saw Springsteen there. Went to, I went to soccer there. I went to a turkey soccer game there. Team USA played there. So I we went to some events there. And then there's that game where T.O. was an Eagle mm-hmm. for five minutes. After Ozzy had dealt for him, he ish-talked Ozzy. He winds up in Philadelphia. That Halloween weekend, we ran bus trips up there. Dude, the fans were just like... I've had two experiences at Ravens-Eagles games with my wife in Philadelphia. Just intolerant. In the modern era, not a place that I would take my wife again. My wife would never go back to an Eagles game. It was awful. And um, I never – I mean, Flyers games, I'll hear that. Um, Eagles games back in the 90s, I, I, as bad of a reputation in having the tickets, I never saw problems at, at – I saw more fights in our stadium, Memorial Stadium, and at Ravens games – by far than I ever saw at the Eagles games in the six, seven years I went to Eagles games because, like, Cowboys fans wouldn't wear stuff in. No, you wouldn't. And if you did, people would razz them. I've, I mean, all the years I went, I maybe I can count on one hand. I've seen more in the probably 20 Ravens games at the stadium here fights and things like that yeah, than I have in Eagles and, games. you know, you, the first thing you said to me before we even began any of this, and I didn't even know all this background, is you're like, we had a jail in our – and it's like the source of pride of Philadelphia. <laughs> we, we put a jail in our stadium. Oh, we're bad mouth nationally. Everybody because you put a jail in your stadium. But it's a matter of it just saved – it saved them the court costs. That's the reason why they said it. They said that way we can process the people quicker. I got thrown out of the vet one night at a Who concert. S- stupid. Rich Abrahams sneaking into the bowels. I got thrown out by like by like Roger Daltrey's goons. <laughs> it's true. I saw Bowie play the vet with uh, with. Why well, was it Live Aid? Right, and I didn't. I told you I should have gone. My uh, friends went to the beach. I didn't go. You didn't go to Live Aid. I made a bad choice. It's oh, a life what a altering. Poor, poor. I hope she was pretty. I mean, come uh, on. No, it was just my buddies. We're, it was right between uh, high school and college. I would have missed that, dude. That I know. I shouldn't family. have. I'm going to find my review of it because I wrote a review for a a York, Pennsylvania uh, magazine. The the Choice was the name of the magazine. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a piece for Live Aid when I I was working at the News American, but I just got tickets. I went over to the heck company and got tickets and uh, and bought another ticket. I somehow, like through a broker locally, even then out of the newspaper, I paid $20 too much for it or whatever at the time. And I went up and I was under the second E in Feed the World. I was in the shower down at the 20-yard line on the back end when Crosby, Stills, and Nash was playing Southern Cross. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Madonna. I mean, when I watch Live Aid, like, that's one of the great things I ever witnessed in my life. That yeah, and that's, I made a bad choice. I we, got there at 8.30 in the morning. I remember seeing Adam Ant on the TV. I was there when the Hooters opened the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, those guys were great guys. That's Philadelphia music, dude. Were you a Tommy Conwell guy? I like Tommy Conwell and the what was it, the Young, Young Rumblers. Rumblers. I saw him play two weeks yep. ago in Dewey. Saw and Hall of Notes many times at the uh, Man Music Center. It's like Merriweather. Right on. Right on. Springsteen. See all of them at the I've back. Been to the bunch man. of times. My buddy runs the man. man. Oh, he does. Oh, cool. Fish was up there a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I've been there since God. The, now, the, the man's 80s. A, like a wild place because I never went there in the '80s when they were shows. I've gone in the modern era. I've seen John Mellencamp there recently. Saw Robert Plant there recently, um, and it, that is. Like the equivalence of like Druid Hill Park, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's in this beautiful park on a hill. Like the man is, I, I'm embarrassed that I haven't spent more time. Okay. No, the man a is a, a charming. Show. Now it's tough neighborhoods. It's Philly. It is what it is. But I would say this: if you go to the man, you're going to a place. Like, no, you're going it, to a place, and it's got good acoustics. The sound's really nice. It's really it's good. It's a there. Merryweather on a hill well, overlooking a school. Right. Right. Basically. 
Yeah, I mean, and you could see the city lights if you're at the top of the hill. It's a beautiful thing. So why am I waxing nice about Philly? So you got a favorite cheesesteak? Yeah, no? yeah. Oh, um, you actually, got a place? Yeah, well, i got to say Pat's. As a kid, my parents would go to Pat's and Geno's. Pat's and Geno's. So, but Pat's because on the way in. Where'd you grow up? I mean, that's I a I grew trip. up in Montgomery County. Just outside. So if your parents would go there, that was like on the way to My the vet or like that? My dad was so great that I, he would take me. We'd go to Flyers games or Sixers games that on the way in, we'd stop at Pat's. On the way out, we'd stop at Pat's. But it was never Geno's. Um, he, I think he preferred Pat's. So if he's driving, he went. I like, I like them both. It depends on the line. Now, when I go back and I take my son there, it, it is depends different. on the line. It People is a little say different. to me, like, what's your favorite crab cake? What's your favorite yeah. crab soup? The one I'm eating right now at Costas is my favorite because right. it's delicious. But like... This crab soup didn't taste like this at Coco's three weeks ago. Wouldn't they? Everybody makes crab soup different. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes crab cakes different, right? And everybody makes cheesesteaks different. Oh, exactly. I mean, that really is the truth. Right. right? And it's just remember, when you say a steak with, that means onions. Oh, whiz. <laughs> Don't put <laughs> no, that. No, 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 whip. When you say whip, that means onions. But they, they put the cheese whiz on there. Of course. And nothing can be cooked. Here's the story That's I have. It's not like, it's not even edible, dude. No, What's it's wrong awesome. with your people? It sits on the grill and it stays nice and hot. All right, here's the thing. We're at Pat Steaks. Um, I've been living in Baltimore. This is in the, God, this is the late 90s. So I'm on a work trip, and a guy that's there, part of our group, is from South Africa. And he's a bigger dude. And we're in line. And he was joking, like, oh, it's, I understand, you know, you're ordering, you have the language. Because he said I looked it up and what to order. And I said, that's fine. Woman right in front of they us. They get offended, right? Well, no. He, it was the soup Nazi, but at Pat Steaks. The woman says, I want to have a steak wit, and I would like this on the – and the guy goes, no. She says it again. No. He's like, it's got to be I cooked. I like the way and it you goes, say no in the Philly accent. Yeah, no. no. Well, no, and the no. guy's sticking his head out the window. No. No. And like so, the way Howard Eskimo said it. Exactly. No. So we basically then the third – There's a sarcasm to it. Exactly. <laughs> it's so sarcastic that I think you're kidding. <laughs> no, I but think that's the way kidding. it is. So the third time she asked it again, he goes, get out of line. So this 6'5 South get African next to me line. goes, can you order like a little girl? He's like, can you order for me? He was afraid <laughs> to order <laughs> of how to order uh, it that way. But back on the stories of going back in there, my father. Hey, Bal, you think it's a Burger King? Right. He was a great man that knowing what's important in life, the things that I've always tried to do with my son, that the Sixers were in the first round. I think it was the 80 playoffs. I'm in grade school. All of a sudden, I get this call to the office. I'm in a Catholic grade school just outside of Philly. This is get a call there. Yeah, the Sixers are playing. They have like a day game. They were doing some weird like Friday right. day game, like a 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock start. Okay. And I get this call to the office. I come to the office, and my dad's there. I'm like, oh, my God, what the hell's happened? What's happened? And he's like, well, thank you. He doesn't say anything to me. He's like, thank you. I'm glad we can get him. I can do this. We go out to the car, and he's like, I got tickets to the game. We're going to the Sixers game, playoff game. He took me out of school to go to the game. Who did they play? Uh, I think they're playing the Hawks. I think Dominique Wilkins, when he was started so with that. got Chocolate Thunder there, right? Yep. Nice. Daryl Dawkins. Well, me and our friends, we went. Have you seen the movie My Air? My wife was a fan. Like, my wife doesn't talk any ish about the 75 Red Sox or never the 86 Six Red Sox. Sox. Oh, geez. No. So, she, yeah, she doesn't talk about that. But she does have all of this Robert Parrish and, you know, that uh. era of the parquet floor. I mean, it was Larry freaking Bird, Bird. right? I mean, like, That was what? phenomenal. But so she loves that era of Celtics. Her dad took her, and they sat near the floor at the garden. She has this great memory of that. So, like, you know, my dad and I never went to an NBA game. My dad was really sour about the Bullets leaving. My dad oh, I can believe that. My dad loved the Bullets. My dad never drove. My dad worked at the point right down here. We lived... I, I grew up two miles that way, and my dad worked two miles that way, and this was his whole life, mm -hmm. going back and forth, and Memorial Stadium and the Civic Center, and he loved the Bullets. Um, he, 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 he just loved their old, he loved all of that, and then it was taken away, and he didn't have a car, and they played in Largo, and they were the Capitol Bullets and the Washington Bullets, and I would watch Kevin Grevy and Elvin Hayes and, and in 77, 78, up late, tape delay, Golden State, I was 8, 9, 10 years old. I used to pretend to dunk, like, you know, like all of that stuff. I was such an NBA fan. But my dad hated the Bullets. And so when we finally went to the Capitol Center, I dragged my father. It was for wrestling matches because we loved the wrestling <laughs> matches. And he did go to a hockey game. My dad never really – I loved hockey, and I dragged him to Clippers games because he loved me and he wanted me. But he preferred the blast. Ah. And he didn't like soccer. But he, something about the blast yes. and the uniforms. and the, My dad liked the action of soccer. He thought that was cool. 
But he never loved hockey, but, but I took him to see the Islanders, the great Islanders. Islanders. Oh, gosh. The great. I mean, until 1982. Were, yeah. So the first uh, Caps game I ever went to, Sky Blue Ice. We sat up in 207 in the red seats. And we went down there, my, my stepbrother's 76 Malibu, and Bossy, Trottier, like the whole Bobby deal. Bobby Nystrom, oh, I remember the that. the whole deal, you know. Because uh, they beat us in the Billy Stanley Smith. Cup in 80. Uh, thank, that was horrible. Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I mean, sports brings people together. Of course it right? does. You had no idea you'd be sitting here talking, no. t- telling me about those greasy-ass cheesesteaks while I'm having a delicious just, bowl well, of Maryland crab soup. Well, Tom Pierce is here. He's a classic five. He does golf. Tell me what you really your day job. Because you've been talking Philadelphia sports. We're wearing people out. No, but like it's a 25th anniversary, out. and all you're doing is talking about Philadelphia. No, the combination. I mean, Philly and Baltimore. It's just like, well, here's the thing. Have you seen the movie Air? About no. Michael Jordan. No, Got yeah. to see on Netflix. Okay. All right. I know what you're talking about now. Well, one thing in that movie, I told my wife and friends that they made it like nobody knew Michael Jordan was good. We were in high school. We had saved up money, me and my friends. We bought, like, second-row seats to watch the Sixers blow out Chicago because they were horrible. Right. We wanted to see Michael Jordan. That's the only reason we drove down to watch him. He dropped 43 that night. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, it is a rookie. Yeah. Oh, they were horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but Michael Jordan, you knew that that guy had ability. And, I mean, it's a great story on what he did and how he changed the industry. But the beauty of going down to the spectrum and seeing and be able to do that and have that experience um, – it's a thing that I'm ashamed you're uh, sorry that your father wasn't able to into the basketball and be, you'd be able to do that having to go to the uh, bullets for the move. But I totally understand. I would be, I mean. Well, we just couldn't get there. Right. But you know then, I, mean? yeah, like, but so I could see having that. I mean, my wife's father, I mean, when he was still alive, I remember Ben hated the Colts. You know, when he was all that, he just would have this. I wanted to see about Kareem him. play. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. literally. You know, oh, I wanted it's to see amazing Kareem to see. grow up top. I mean, I loved, I collected basketball cards. And I loved the NBA during that yeah. era. I really did. I mean, it was amazing that watching, like, I got to go to a couple games when they played the Celtics, and Mikhail, how he, good he was, and Dennis Johnson. Dennis Johnson on those championship teams with them, I think, is underrated. He did a lot with, uh, they could talk about Danny Ainge, but Dennis Johnson did a lot of ball control and what they did and how they ran their offenses in, in the Celtics when they were really good with him, Mikhail, Parrish, and Bird. I always liked Dennis Johnson on that team. Well, and then came the bad boys and all that good stuff. So, um, Classic Five, give me the, 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 the elevator speech about golf and this time of the year as our Classic Five partner as well. Okay, well, this time of the year, it's actually we're enjoy, enjoy the weather. Get out and play. Um, this is this time of year that I think many people who – like golf or want to get into golf, the fall golf is probably the best time of the year to play. The, seat, the weather's getting cooler. It's comfortable. Uh, it's a great time to get out, try the sport, but also get out and, you know, enjoy yourselves. We're all about fun. We like to put fun and promote. Golf's supposed to be fun. It's an activity. It's a sport. But you're supposed to have fun with the friends, enjoy the outside. We're the place for everyone. Go up to Pine Ridge and hit that simulator, man. Top Tracer. That's Top Tracer. What's it called? Top Tracer. What is it? That's the only name you have. That's for it. well. That's the name of what it is. Top Tracer. They are the people. They also own um, Top Golf. It's a similar technology. See, see, but if I say Top Tracer, nobody knows what the hell that is. What is that? It's it's a, it's it's, it's a, a simulator. simulator. Right, right. But you use the cameras, but you don't have to, and you're hitting live balls, and they're full flights going the full range. I mean, if I say that's a Kleenex, you know it's a tissue. Correct. But if I say and if I say that's a frigid air, you know it's a frigid. You know, we'll talk next year, and you know you're going to know Top Tracer. If I say a Coke or a Pepsi, <laughs> you know you're getting a cold, cold soda. soda. Correct. Yeah, and then that's what it's going to be. Well, no, it is one of the, the, I mean, that's what Rangers are now putting into them, top tracer. Jen, I want to have one of those wacko for Flacco signs. I want to show. So, Flacco's like into golf. Mm-hmm. He's one. Do you claim him? Is he still Philly even though he's on the Jersey side? Or how does that, how does that work? He went to Delaware. If, if, so. if you're from Camden, how, how does that work if you're from Camden? Um, Camden's, uh, Camden's Philly. I mean, it's, it's a suburb. It's just across the river. So, we have three signs here for you. Um, and Flacco texted me yesterday. I love Joe. I, what's the name of that crazy, almost like the Masters course up in Philadelphia that's a, a very, very exclusive private? Aronimic. No. It's not Aronimic? Different, different name. No. Give, give me the, it, It's so underground that, like, you have to be invited by, like. No, that's in New Jersey. That's um, Salkin Valley. No. This is, a, well, it might be in the Jersey side of Philly. It might be on the Jersey side. I'm trying to think of what it is. But anyway. Pine Valley. Pine Valley. That's in Jersey. That's Pine Valley. That's the yeah, one yeah. That's about. the yeah. You that's have to know. Oh, like, yeah, oh, that's it's like the, the Oh, yeah. It's the master. Oh, yeah. Right. It's Augusta. So you know, I, I don't know much about golf, but Joe loves golf, and uh, Joe is the favorite son of Philadelphia for me. So like, I don't know how I could possibly 
hate Philadelphia when they gave us Joe Flacco. Yeah. Right. I mean, no, seriously. you can't. I mean, Joe was perfect for the team at that point. I mean, the, all the criticism I, I was friends. Oh, we only. I'm like, I take him as my quarterback. I mean, it was right after Donovan. I mean, we had nobody. We were going through that until what we have now. I mean, I was like, What's I was like, Joe. What's the greatest thing ever come from Philadelphia, other than the cheesesteak and the pretzels? Pretzels. No, I mean, I mean, food. I mean, like, what, what would Ben be Franklin. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. Walt Whitman, right? Walt like, Whitman, Ben Franklin. Anything they named the bridge at. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you get a bridge. <laughs> a school, a bridge, a monument, oh, anything you get a name after. That's the Woodrow Wilson. See, I always love my favorite line from Ben Franklin is thing, the same thing what's fish and a house guest have in common. They both get stale and stink after three days. All right, this is the last Philadelphia. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poop on Philadelphia as I finish my Maryland crab soup here uh, as part of our 25th anniversary. Brought to you by the Maryland Lottery in conjunction with Window Nation. Uh, we're going to be crab cake touring like crazy the rest of the month. Check it all out at BaltimorePositive.com. Celebrating 25 years and spiking the ball because I made it 25 years. And, I, and why wouldn't I spike the ball if I made it 25 years? Man who saved my wife's life is from Germany. His English is impeccable even though... You know, he doesn't think it is, but his English is perfect. It's better than most people from Dundalk that I speak, certainly from North Point Village. Um, so he comes here. We, we snuck him into the country um, under the auspice that she was working. We wound up taking him on the surprise trip all over. He loves the NBA. Mm -hmm. Loves the NBA. So I took him to see – he loves Dirk Nowitzki. So this whole thing was about him meeting Dirk Nowitzki. It was almost like we could have made a miniseries out of it because we went all the way to California. Dirk Nowitzki turned his knee and didn't make the trip. And Mark Cuban set this whole thing up. So Mark Cuban's a real saint, a really good guy. So – and he went up meeting Nowitzki at, at Madison Square Garden. But along the way, my wife got really sick because she had just had a transplant with his cells and their genetic twins, and it's a whole thing. We're driving to New York to go to Madison Square Garden to meet Dirk Nowitzki, and he doesn't know it, but they're playing the Dallas Mavericks, and Marvin Lewis was there because they were playing the Giants. It was all this stuff that went on. We go through Philadelphia, and he's like, I want to see where Rocky's movie. I want to see the steps. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll take you up to Philly, and the Eagles were playing the Falcons that day, and it was a year that Matt Ryan was good. They were going mm -hmm. to the Super Bowl. I said, man, you can go to an NFL game. Ah, we've we gone to three NFL games. I, I would rather see the Liberty Bell. I want to see Liberty Bell. I'm like, all right, Niels, I'll take you to see Liberty Bell. So, you know, good in park was a Sunday when the Eagles were playing. So, like, the city's a little shut down, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it was a little kind of weird. We were making our way to New York to go to a Monday night Madison Square Garden Knicks Mavericks game, okay? That was the destination. So we're in Philly. I take him to the west side, you know, the whole street leading up to the steps. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. You know, the whole thing's going. So... We go down, we park the car, we go to the Liberty Bell, and this speaks to your cheese whiz experience, okay, with the poor immigrant person that's just looking for some meat on a bun with some cheese and not be mistreated in South Philly or get hijacked or get their car broken into and all their equipment stolen outside the Center City Marriott like one guy at the table did mm -hmm. back in 1997 on a bender. So... We get up to the front of the Liberty Bell. We're in Independence Hall. It's cold out. I remember it was like, it was, it was November. It was, it was kind of like we weren't dressed right. In the line, a couple tourists here and there. We get up, and the guard shook down my dude. Niels, what's your name? Where are you from? Got a passport? Like, all of this, like, frisk him, like, physically. He's six foot six. He's this giant guy. Frisk him down. And as we go in, he's pissed. Like, you could see his German getting, like, I could see him lose his countenance a little bit about getting, like, rubbed down mm -hmm. at the Liberty Bell. Yeah, that's... At 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And he says to me, I have decided I do not like Philadelphia. <laughs> we will not come back to Philadelphia. So there. <laughs> so there's my, you suck flyers moment. How do That's you feel right. about that? Well, I think they do right now, too. By the way, that mascot, <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. It's, I think they try to create a fanatic. They try to go off. But and, your team sucks. Yeah, and has been. They need it. They hopefully have blown it up, and we'll see how it comes back. But we're, we're at the bottom and have been for a while. One day I'm going to tell the story of Zach Leonsis and I having a 20-minute phone call that made me never watch the Capitals again. <laughs> so I am, I, I'm not without a team anymore because Trotz – is back with the Predators, and I have, and I've told him this, I have all my closet full of Predators gear. So, she'll tell you, 
Even though I'm missing my pointer finger from a lawnmower accident in 1973, I have fang fingers again. So I'm back on the Nashville Predator. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. So I have a team again. That's so, good. Yeah, the, the, listen. The last hockey game I went to after a lifetime of loving hockey was literally escorting the Stanley Cup with Alex Ovechkin and Tony Robbins off the ice in Las Vegas. Literally, she and I and Tony Robbins and Alex Ovechkin taking the Stanley Cup in and then partying with the cup for four hours and watching Ovechkin come over and grab the cup literally where you're sitting from my table with Barry Trotz and carting it out. And about eight minutes later, she and I are like on social media watching him cart it across the street through the MGM at the Tiesto concert, that she and I were online in the second period when we're losing mm -hmm. after the second period, looking for tickets to Tiesto in case we lost the game. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Like, and that was the end of my hockey experience. And I don't want to say I've dropped the puck or given up hockey, but, and I shall enjoy hockey again, but I've just I've decided to go with concerts. That makes sense. But that's the beauty of, I mean, being in a city that growing up like in Philadelphia, that Baltimore wished they had also, you had the four sports. When one of your sports isn't doing well. Well, you don't watch every Sixers game every no, night, No, you right? can't. Well, you can't. Well, you, don't. It's, you can't. Well, you don't. You can't. It's hard. And when the Flyers stink, you go away. And when the Orioles stink like, and lose 120, like, everybody goes, goes away. away. And now everybody comes back, back. at the same time. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen our web traffic this summer. I mean, I see what baseball represents when it's – done the right way, mm -hmm. which is why I did free the birds, right. wherever the sign is. I did free the birds, so okay, here, here we go, it's a purple free the birds. I did free the birds because, like, I wanted it to be like this every day. Oh, exactly. So I, I, it pissed me off taking my kid to the first playoff game of his life in Philadelphia. We saw them play a wild card game against the Rockies. Mm -hmm. Like, I was 20 years ago. Right. I'm wearing my bubble pee baby blue Sixto Lescano jersey. I have... A Phillies jersey. jersey. I have a number 34, 6 no less. Those are like Luke's jersey. jerseys are awesome, though. Man, 83 that's World a, Series see. patch on it, oh, you know? Oh. Autographed by Sisto. <laughs> Sisto Lescano was my favorite player. Milwaukee Brewers, he had that little bit of Oscar Gamble thing mm -hmm. going on, 76, 77. Hit the long ball, you know, with Gorman Thomas, right? But this – I. <sighs> The Orioles will make the I playoffs. I love sports, Tom. Oh, I know. The, the Orioles will make this playoffs, and I can't wait because I want to see. I remember this was my second town living in the 90s, going to the playoff games, the Orioles. I'm glad we retired Orioles. these. I'm glad this is a figment of my imagination. You know, I, I, and, and Cal, this was, from the, this was from the 2007 Cal induction. Mm -hmm. this is, I did Free the Birds in 06, which is now 17 years ago. Okay. Right. 17 years. 17 years since Cal went in the Hall of Fame. And You're getting old. And we're finally <laughs> maybe having a baseball team that can get to the World, World Series. Series. And you've had, a, you've had a handful of those now as a Phillies fan. Yeah. I mean, in my lifetime before that, it was 50 they made the playoffs. That's it. I mean, the Phillies have been in existence for like over 130 Dude, people, years. If you were to ask We've been me, to like four World Series. <laughs> so you had no idea I was a Phillies fan in the 80s, right? No. Before an hour. No. Ago, right? And you're giving me all this, like you went to game six. I went to the final game in 80 when we beat Kansas City. Okay. I remember where I was at, and that was at Cheryl Barrett's house down in Lansdale. We were just down um, the third baseline. My dad was able to get tickets. It was. I was a Brett fan, you know, because he chased 400 and like all that. And and I love the Royals. I mean, the Royals had been the Royals beat the Yankees up in '76. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you beat the Yankees up, if you beat Reggie Jackson and Billy Martin, you and I were cool. Right. You know, I mean, I liked you. So I liked the Royals, and I like would drag my dad out when split off pitch because I like split off. My dad and I went to see Dennis Leonard pitch or Moose Haas. Like we went to see starting pitchers. My dad would say, we're going to go the night Ryan pitches or Tanana pitches. So I saw all of that, always, right? Um, but the 80 Phillies, it was Tug McGraw, and you got to believe, and I was 12 years old, literally that week they won the World Series. I turned 12, and the National League was really exotic, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was, it was a different game. It was played differently. I loved baseball, loved everything about baseball, and... So I fell in love with the Phillies. Nope. I fell in love with your Phillies. Like, and, that, and it was a gateway for me to you know, go up there and eat those cheesesteaks and eat those pretzels and like all of that. that I, I love those memories. I'm, I'm so well, glad do, I fell in love with the do Phillies. Do you know the biggest <laughs> moment in that whole playoff run that made Pete Rose what he did in the Houston series? We were down, I think, two games to nothing. We came back in the last game. We're losing, I think, in like was that 15-inning inning game at the Astrodome was crazy, right? Right. But this, so he's at bat. We need a base runner. And, I mean, nowadays, you know, with replay, they might have thrown him out. You watched him, you know, how he hunched over. 
he's hunched over, and you saw that pitch come inside, and he watched it let it hit his leg to make sure we got a base runner. He scored the winning run. But the man just let – he knows I got to get on base. But he's not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I know. But, but that's, Big Poppy's got a hose every night. It's right. A, it's crazy. No, it is. But that's the that's thing is that people, you think about when you make the World Series, but a game in a moment like that, that I have to get on base. Do whatever you can to do. He was a player. I mean, when he came to Philadelphia, Philadelphia loved Pete Rose. I only met Pete Rose once in my life. He was always here, and he was promised onto my show one year because Frank Slifkin knew him through Tops in Sports. I think they brought Pete. And, and Pete was, like, really, like, taboo. But Pete was a prick. I mean, Pete was in everybody's face. Like, he had his sports bar down at Boca and, like, all that. Um, I ran into Pete at the Tampa airport with Keith Melkier. I went to a playoff game in 1999. Tampa Bay Bucks were playing the Steve Young Niners in Tampa. I had Art Modell's tickets. Thank you, Roy Summerhoff uh, and Baker. And I was at the airport 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday night in Tampa. And there's Pete Rose sitting, waiting to get on a plane, probably going to wherever he was card show to sign autographs. Probably going to the track. (laughs) (laughs) It was January. It was Tampa. And he was nice to me. I mean, he was, he was pleasant. Right. You know, I mean, I didn't – and I had his autograph already because my dad got it on the Stadium Hilton letterhead back in 1981 when he went in and met Manny mm-hmm. Trio and Bo Diaz. Right. The late, great Bo Diaz. All right, I, I, I'm done with Philadelphia. Right, we're done. Do you want to say anything about the Orioles and the Ravens? I mean, do you – Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm going to the uh, Ravens-Eagles preseason game. No, but I think but the Ravens are going to be But you're going to have an Eagles hat on. Yeah, I will have. Uh, I won't be wearing a jersey because I'll probably be eighty-five degrees. Do you degrees own anything Oriole or Raider yes. related? Oh you yes. Do. Oh yeah, I go to the games. So you wear you wear our colors. I would yeah. never wear an Eagles hat. I, I mean, will. no, I like. I them. would never wear a Flyers anything. Well, I can understand that. I would never wear a Capitals thing. Um, I, had, I only I lost two bets in college. I've already I admitted to you. I have thing. a Sixto Lescano thing. Right. If if my wife bought me a throwback Dr. J. But if she bought me a, a throwback Dr. J. jersey, I wanted to be the the team he made most famous, which were the Pittsburgh the, Pisces. I, the Pittsburgh the Pisces. Pisces. Oh God! Yeah, I mean the fish is say <laughs> Pittsburgh. I mean, come on. It's a movie. <laughs> I bet that movie does not stand the test. I bet that gets I a do. lot of Rotten Tomatoes. I bet, I bet it's too. a Rotten. Um, Stocker Channing was a big, big part of the fish is say Pittsburgh. So my wife says Rizzo. Whoa, Rizzo. Rizzo. Yeah. All right, we're at Maryland Crab Soup. We're celebrating 25 years. I have friends stopping by. Um, Relatives are sick right now, but we'll see about stopping by. My wife's a relative. She's here. Uh, Pete is on vacation. Bill Cole's on, everybody's on vacation. It's August. And if they're not doing that, they're golfing at Classic 5, right? Exactly. Oh, I, I looked before, in our little break. I looked at our T-sheets. We've got about uh, 900 people on the books for today on the five courses combined. Is that 82 degrees and sunny? Is that what that does? Oh, yeah. People come out in the afternoon. People and you know start bailing out of work. On the day when it rains and you have a tea, that sucks, right? Oh, it's the worst. No, the worst is having Oriole tickets and being there during a rain delay. That's yeah. the worst for me. I don't like rain delays. Yeah, I don't. I'd yeah. rather just say I'm not golfing today and go do something else right. than like sit on the golf course and watch it's it rain funny. all day. Exactly. At least you don't have to do that. No, no, not not at all. All right. Uh, Tom Pierce is here. Classic Five. We appreciate their partnership, sponsorship. Get out to their uh, five facilities. Let's see. I can always name them. Let's see. Clifton Park, Carroll Park, Forest Park. Uh, I, 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 did I did I give – I forgot. Hold on. Those uh, are Mount parts. Pleasant, Mount Pleasant and Pine Ridge. There Correct. you go. All right. It's like i got to pass the test or I lose the sponsorship. <laughs> I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570. It's all brought to you by our friends at the uh, Maryland Lottery. Uh, let yourself play. Get involved. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary for them. It sort of inspired my 25th. We have a new logo coming. We have things. We're doing the 25 WNST stories of glory that begin right here at Costas. Um, stay with us. Come grab some free stuff.